Shall I start? Yeah, you can now get 16 minutes. You can get 16 minutes. <laughs> I thought I was going to say I've only got 10 for being a little... Um... All right, so I'll start. Well, that was great, actually. And sometimes, you know, forceful... <laughs> Sometimes forceful interventions in systems provokes them to go in a little bit of a different direction, which actually reinforces perhaps expectations and also can provoke sort of a, a really good outcome. And I think that was really great because uh, we heard all these wonderful stories. And so hopefully I'm going to help the students see at least some opportunity. I'm going to talk about systems literacy. I'll give you a report on what we're doing, what this is. Now, half of you, um, I think, probably know nothing about what systems literacy might be because um, this is a conversation that's been going on for two years, and as I understand it, half of the people attending this conference are new. So, I'm going to do a little recap. But first, why am I doing this? Why am I interested in this? A number of reasons. Um, and I thought I'd just put some of them up. Uh, one reason is trees I met in Sitka in 1992. I'll tell you about the story about that some other time. The ocean. My grandkids. And I like to have fun, and um, I'd like to encourage more systems literacy, as we've just heard. So that would be, uh, that's my motivation. Or well, it's some of my motivation, anyway, right? So the next thing is, so what have we been doing about systems literacy? I got into this because of oceans. And I started in oceans in 2000 with the National Geographic. And the geographic was concerned that people didn't know about geography. And then they said, well, we will use the oceans to teach uh, geography. And that then led to the ocean scientists all saying, why aren't we more literate about the ocean? Why don't people know about the ocean? Well, it's not taught in schools. You know, it's 7% of the planet, it's 99% of the biodiversity, blah, blah, blah. It's, you know, over time, geological time, it's 50% of the oxygen we're breathing. I mean, it's a pretty important thing, right? So why is it not taught? So the problem is, um, I, we, we worked on how to do that. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that in a minute. So over the past two years, we've done a number of different things. I've listed them up here, um, which I think uh, there's the ocean literacy work, there's the earth science literacy work, um, there's the atmospheric science literacy that started this. Um, then I, in, I went to Washington, and we talked about socio-ecological systems, and uh, we talked about it in Berlin, and then in Linz, we had a conversation about it, and I'm just putting a plug in, go to Amazon.com or Amazon.de, and please download the, the report from IFSR on systems literacy. Um, and then I've been doing a number of workshops in Incozy uh, with colleagues, uh, the, the systems engineering community on systems literacy, um, and it's great to be here in Austria because it's all about water. If you know, if you haven't learned about where the water comes, thanks to Noam asking that question in Berlin, think about where the water comes from. I encourage you to go out and find out where the water comes you from you've been drinking and find out why it's under such pressure. Um, and that's a really been inspiring to me. Um, and then if anybody wants to help with a systems literacy workshop in Incozy in the Great Lakes in October, please see me uh, later. So, ocean. The ocean is a defining feature of our planet. Ocean literacy means understanding the ocean's influence on you and your influence on the ocean. Maybe it should be us, actually, which is where the Canadians have taken this idea. Not you, because that's very American, isn't it? It's very individual. But Canadians tend to be a little bit more embracing, you know? All right. All right. So that's cool. Um, so ocean, it's inspiring. Like, it's pretty, it's nice, you know, we've got nice things. So we've done a number of guides over the years, geography. Uh, then geography, ocean and geography, and then ocean. So, um, I just want to explore a little bit. You were talking about, people talk about platforms these days. So, one of the things that um, people like is the fact that we've got a brochure or card that says ocean literacy on it. And that is a nice, colourful, wonderful symbol that has lots of good words on it. And thanks to Ray, we've been thinking about symbols and Chinese and Japanese and other ways. But it's a very pretty thing, right? And this was a collective collaborative, participative effort over a couple of years that everybody got excited about in the United States. It's for the United States, but it's now going global. That's a whole other problem and question. But on the back here is all the people that contributed, all their logos. It's great fun. Everybody thought this is great. And they hold it up at meetings like this and say, look, you know, you can be ocean literate. So 
Why can't we do that with systems? You can be systems literate, you know? Now, it might not be a guide, it could be a guide, it could be a piece of music, it could be an artist ex exhibition, it could be an ongoing process, it could be this conference, you know? We've got to think expansively about what it might mean. Um, so this has had global impact. Last month, we actually got, I was there in New York, amazing, uh, at the at UN, at the first conference the US had on the ocean. And we had a session there, Ocean Literacy for All. Well, we want a session at the UN in five years, so Systems Literacy for All or something similar, right? So that's the plan, or at least that's the idea. We're building on from the science, I mean, we are the science, the Society of System Science, you know, the word science is in there, and I'd like to see that perhaps uh, at least acknowledged more. And here are, from the USA, at least the next generation science standards, which is a starting point that we can build out and expand our ideas and notions about some of these things um, in terms of what concepts are we really talking about. Here there are seven listed, and there are ones that you're probably all familiar with, but are they explained in ways that we would like to see? I mean, these are English words, they're American words, actually. Uh, would English words work the same? What would they be in Chinese? What would they be in symbols? You know, how do we expand our, our notion of patterns, cause and effect? This is the reason I want to use my computer. Um, scale, proportion, and quantity. Systems and system models, energy and matter, structure and function, and stability and change. So I'm getting old and these blocks, anyway. That's another story. Um, so, the, these concepts are a starting point. They're in use now in probably 75% of the states in the US. They are cross-cutting disciplinary ideas, and it's a starting point. So, we've been talking about ocean literacy. Well, what would systems literacy look like? Here's the definition of what ocean literacy is, an understanding of the ocean's influence on you and your influence on the ocean. As I said, that's an American definition. I thought it was really interesting in New York when we had the Canadian colleagues and partners, and they changed it from you uh, to us, and then our response. So last year I had a one-to-one -one correlation, but last night I was sitting there thinking about this, and this is why the slides are important, because I spent hours on this stuff, as you do, right? And it's like on you and us, and your, and maybe our influence on the system. So think about that. You know, what is, what is not only your influence on the ocean and the influence, influence on you, but what about systems and influences on systems? So, um, the essential principles of systems and sciences could correlate to the essential principles of ocean sciences. I know that's a one for one, but we've also got earth science and we've got atmospheric science, so we could, we could work with that and see how they sort of build a hole of some kind, one hole, one, one ocean, I mean, even the concept of one ocean. Everybody grows up with the Pacific Ocean, the Atlantic Ocean, the Southern Ocean, the Arctic Ocean. Many people think there are lots of oceans. But there's actually only one ocean, and it's pretty big. Okay? And it's interconnected. But you know, those kind of misconceptions about huge systems that influence our life, you would be surprised how many times you see the word oceans in literature. Well, I mean, is that a good thing? I mean, we, we understand we need to name things differently, right, in order to understand them, but it leads to certain thinking patterns which we may think are good or not. So two is the, see, I just can't, really, I'll have to do it on here, see, so that's what we got here. The ocean and life and the ocean shape the feature of the earth as well. How do we, how do we shape the earth? How do we shape our thinking? How do we form our ideas? How do, we, how do we model? How do we model in relation to other models? Right? Um, maybe that's number three. Number four, the ocean made Earth habitable. Well, we, we use systems to, to, to live and, and work, and they have patterns, and they have flow cycles. So, you know, need some help on this. The ocean supports a great diversity of life and ecosystems. Well, systems are diverse. I mean, they, 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 they're everywhere. So how do we... How do we uh, describe that uh, idea, that concept. Um, interconnected, that's a, that's a fairly logical uh, point. Oh, I don't need in the wrong time. Terrible. Um, so, systems literacy plenary last year. I asked you to draw what you thought the system was. I wanted to give you a little bit of feedback on that. Uh, look at the variety and the diversity of responses we had last year to these patterns. And I've been working with now a colleague and friend, Halim Finidori, 
uh, who you've come to know, and we presented a little bit about this uh, just um, this uh, the day before yesterday, I think, uh, on patterns. I wanted to just add a little bit about this, uh, thanks to Ray Ison at the Linz um, uh, conversation. We, we talked about systems, systemic capability, systems literacy, uh, systemic sensibility. We had some talk about sensibilities earlier on this morning. This all does flow sometimes, which is really nice. And so uh, Helene and I have been talking about pattern literacy and pattern instinct as a sort of another idea to think about how do we get to that. I, I, because somebody said to me last night, at the same time that general systems theory was uh, prescribed, somebody, uh, I have to get his name, but it was general modeling theory, which is a book, which I just Googled. And anyway, it's a real 500 page book on general modeling theory, which so we maybe have pattern systems models. We're beginning to flesh out some of these ideas. So, so Jeffrey Vickers, I'd like to bring him into the conversation um, because, well, not only because he was British, but um, <laughs> obviously he's got an award here in the society. He's a fairly significant figure in the in the life of the Ayatollahs, um, and I, I would like us to think about appreciation as an action. So uh, that, and here's a here's a quote, and I just put in you know, a quote from John Warfield's book on the uh, science of generic design, which I would encourage you to become familiar with some of that work. The clear message of systems thinking is that human scope is limited and we cannot use even what scope we have except in a situation in which we are sensitively, sensitively and intimately engaged. And we've been offered both this insight and the temptation to ignore it and vested interests powerfully favor the second. So don't underestimate this task that we are embarking upon. It is not a simple task, as you know. But we have to work together on it, we've got to do it. The planet is asking us to do it, people are asking us to do it. It is very, very important work. So let's go and explore, let's see how systems literacy can promote sensitive and intimate appreciation of our engagement with systems. How do we do that? We need, we need everybody here in this room, the society, our friends, neighbours and others who have a, an affinity for systems to work on this. Um, I'm, I'm just thrilled, honoured and kindly overwhelmed a little bit to be president-elect uh, for 2019. You can see the emergence of a theme, perhaps. Um, but anyway, it's been a privilege and a pleasure to uh, present here, and I think I'm giving you your three minutes back. Thank you very much. <laughs>